Hello, my name is Donna Granada, and welcome to this segment of Focus on the Masters Portrait of an Artist. Focus on the Masters is a nonprofit arts education program documenting many of the artists who reside within Ventura County. We document these extraordinary artists and their work through photographic portraits, audio and video interviews, and biographical research that encompasses each artist's experiences, artistic reflections, and development. We then present this work to a broad public through extensive educational programs like the one you're about to see, along with our Learning to See Youth Outreach, a monthly Meet the Artist series, regular exhibitions, and a quarterly newsletter. This segment will feature conceptual artist Dennis Oppenheim. Stanford educated, Oppenheim is a world-famous pioneering figure within contemporary art history, leading in the fields of performance, video, film, sculpture, and public art. Locally, one of Dennis Oppenheim's early public art projects, Bus Home, can be found at the Bus Transfer Center located in the City of Ventura's Pacific View Mall. Welcome to our program, Dennis. Now, public art is a relatively new genre for you, correct? Relatively. Yeah. And it's interesting because your, your various genre as you have evolved as an artist changed dramatically from, from different media and different um, movements within art history. Tell us a little bit about um, you know, the shifts in your career as it has progressed. Well, the, the, uh, it's true that the work has, uh, in the past, uh, since 1967, uh, has, has gone through uh, originally uh, uh, early conceptual areas to uh, video and, and performance body art, and uh, then eventually back into structure. For, for a long time, it was in a, a kind of dematerialized area where things were not uh, object-based. Uh, uh, more theoretical, <clears throat> and um, uh, when it got back into structure, uh, that is back into materials and and uh, 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 scale and things of this sort. Uh, it uh, I think ushered in this uh, uh, compatibility with public public art, which which is now uh, not not all that I'm uh, involved in, but 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 it is something that I'm I'm trying to work work with uh, uh, at the moment. And this idea of working with collaborators, and not so much collaborators, because certainly some of your large-scale sculpture you need to collaborate, but working from the conceptual moment on, from working with the various architects and in integrating sculpture into a specific site is very new for you and, and certainly for our community as well. And do you like this transition in your career at this point? Yeah, well, um, it's true that when, when you start out in fine art, um, uh, the usual uh, beginning point is working alone. And this can persist the rest of your life. I mean, this sort of isolation, conjuring the work in a kind of uh, uncompromised uh, internal s uh, setting. Uh, with, without any collaboration at all. And for a long time, this is really how I worked. And I didn't think that I would be able to collaborate. I thought that uh, it was so important to um, uh, originate, to, to really develop the work uh, from a very deep skin uh, level. Um, th things have a lifespan, and they have a tendency of, of wearing, actually, um, Collaboration can be expansionary. Uh, why not uh, uh, work with uh, people and enlarge the whole momentum of the uh, of the operation? Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to look at some slides and, and show <clears throat> everyone a, a variety of work from the different periods throughout your career and show the evolution of your career, which is absolutely fascinating. Well, th uh, this is uh, annual rings. It was done in. Uh, 68. It's done on uh, a border between uh, the USA and uh, 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 the Canadian uh, area near Fort Kent, Maine. So it's really a time boundary. On one side of the work is 12 o'clock, the other side is 1 o'clock. Um, basically, this is a good example of, of where sculpture went from the object. This is mostly interesting in terms of how 
uh, it seemed necessary, which seems unbelievable, uh, that sculpture had to consider an alternative to making objects, because it seemed that objects w w was, was intrinsic to the idea of sculptural form and matter. This is ushering the idea of sculpture as place, instead of the, uh, the artist working uh, directly manually with mater uh, uh, materials. It was more a, a, a sense of activating real space outside the studio, real place. And uh, uh, this got art into the real world. Uh, so it no longer dealt with artifice, illusion. It dealt with real temperature, real uh, location, the political uh, ramifications of a site. It's what they refer to as site-specific, where the work is specifically uh, uh, designated to uh, operate uh, uh, legitimately on, on a site, and it references the site. Th these are tree rings cut into the snow, uh, lasted only for about uh, half an hour. It could be retained through photography. All of a sudden, photography began to separate from a, a minor art form into something major under the auspices of, of a conceptual orientation. Uh, as soon as you got outside the studio and, and, and away from artifice, uh, the real world just kind of rushed in. And, and, and the artist is activator, is instigate, instigator within a, a real-time system. It became something that, that could, be, could be applied. Directed seating is, is seating a field in Holland uh, in a certain configuration. And the next slide uh, will show it um, uh, harvested in the form of an X as if it's canceled out. Uh, in, in a work like this, the artist acts as uh, within a master plan, some sort of, 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 of uh, exterior quasi-political uh, agricultural dynamic where the artwork is configured within a system. The eventual place of this work is photography and then the grain from the cut was shipped to a museum and ex 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 exhibited as raw material. Hmm. <clears throat> now I'm sure you're not a stranger to controversy and um, I would imagine over the years you've had quite a bit of it. Um, when somebody says to you now come on is, is this art what do you say to them? Well, I mean, they could say that now, and I, I would probably listen. But at that time, <laughs> at that time when I was younger, uh, I was sure that this was on the right track. Uh, land art seems so right uh, as a lineage from, from objects and from minimalism. It had a strong uh, 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 base in theory, and it just seemed to be a direction that had to be explored. Mm -hmm. This is a pretty elaborate piece. It looks so simple, but uh, share the story. Well, we had to find a person who would risk their lives to make this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and in California, it wasn't hard. <laughs> Uh, this is uh, not far from here. It's like El Mirage, and uh, I hired a, a aerial uh, ace, a person who who hires out uh, to do smoke um, uh, writing, and I asked him to do a vortex, and he told me that, well, this is exactly what they teach you not to do in flying school, <laughs> is to uh, speed around of this kind of funnel shape and go down because you'll eventually crash, but. He said he could do it. So I was on the ground with a radio control, and then he was up, up, up there, and we communicated. And, and in that communication, we drew, drew the spiral.